Hello everybody, this is Gary Patterson and we're back again to today. Today is Tuesday, October 10th and we're here to review with our community and our staff um, the results of the uh, last evening, October 9th, school board meeting. So let's get right to it. We'd like to each month bring you these updates uh, following our regular school board meeting for those of you who couldn't attend and just to keep everybody up to up to speed on some of the information that you may need to know about upcoming events and policies and procedures. So let's get right into our board meeting. Uh, we moved the board meeting from its regular location at the Benson boardroom to the auditorium, the reason uh, to the high school auditorium. The reason for that is, uh, of course, with the Rob students being dispersed uh, to our other campuses, have uh, made some temporary overcrowding uh, uh, situations until we get our new school built. Everybody knows that. Well, at uh, Uvalde Elementary, they were in need of some extra classrooms, and so it's much easier for us to move to another location for a board, room, for a board meeting once a month than it is to move in and out of, of uh, move somebody out of classrooms uh, at, at Uvalde Elementary. So we have given up uh, that room and turned it over to Uvalde Elementary. They have already moved their library into that facility and it looks great, which opened up some classrooms so they can expand into. So that's the reason for the move and we'll be at the high school auditorium for the at least the near future if the board wishes to bounce that uh, meeting around uh, around the district, well, then we will certainly notify each and every one of you uh, as we move forward. So just, you might, if you're interested in coming to the board meeting, you might check that on the website each month. It'll have the location as we post that on the Friday prior to the board meeting. So let's just get into the meeting. We had a good start to our board meeting last night. And let me just say, I've, I've been a little remiss in, in thanking our uh, junior ROTC uh, classes. They they, they're with us every month and different cadets uh, present the, the colors and lead us in our uh, pledges uh, to the American and Texas flag. They always do a great job. They're so professional looking. They're dressed up. They're, um, they, they just add a lot to our ceremony at the start of each meeting. And I wanna thank all of them uh, as they participate uh, throughout the course of the year because they do a great job and we're always glad to see them help us with our board meetings. But as we got started last night, we had a board recognition of a, a, of a partnership that we want to tell you about. The Texas Workforce Commission um, has awarded, did award us a, a check for $310,000 uh, to help facilitate our JET grant, which uh, we had applied for and several members of our board of trustees through the college and with others uh, with the Workforce Commission were able to secure a $310,000 grant to help us with our welding program at the high school. And that is a tremendous gift for us. It allows us, welding has become quite popular. And of course, it's a, a, a great skill that students can take and if they want to even make a living out of that skill, there's, certain, there's certainly a lot of opportunities to do that. So it's a real good career and tech program for us. And so it's growing uh, more requisitions for students to be in there. And so this will allow us to grow, uh, get brand new equipment, uh, safety equipment, welding equipment uh, to grow that program. So we wanna thank you again. Thanks to, the, uh, to the, our board members, especially our board president was heavily involved in that and the college and the Texas Workforce Commission. We appreciate that in securing that grant. So they were there to present last night and we had a photo op and uh, that was uh, always good news. So uh, I wanna move into some of the other uh, news. Uh, we have some new staff members that we introduced to the, uh, uh, to the board last night and I'll go over those with you. Uh, it's a little different situation having uh, these type of appointments uh, after the year's already started, but it's important as we get these people in, make sure that our board at least has the opportunity to meet them, introduce them to the community as well. So we have a new special education director, Priscilla Sanders. Ms. Sanders comes to us from El Paso, and uh, we have been advertising for the special education director during the summer and the fall, and, and Ms. Sanders was an excellent applicant 
And so she was able to get out of her responsibilities in Eagle uh, in El Paso and come to us around the 1st of October. So we're glad to have her and she's been visiting the district uh, all around all the campuses, looking at the programs, our special education programs, visiting with our teachers and administrators. So we wanna thank Ms. Sanders and welcome her aboard. Also, we've had a change in our food service director. Ray Ovalle has taken over that position. So we wanna uh, recognize uh, and appreciate Mr. Ovalle coming into our district and, and doing the good work that he's doing, uh, looking over our food service needs. Also, we have uh, three new police officers on board that we introduced to the board last night. Uh, Wendy Fernandez, who comes to us from Eagle Pass, Brandon Herrera, who also comes to us from Eagle Pass, and Aaron Estrada, who comes to us from the Uvalde Sheriff's Department. So we want to welcome those officers. Um, we, it's been almost a year now. It's gone really fast, but it's been almost a year since we hired Chief Gutierrez uh, to start rebuilding our police department. And we are so proud of the officers that we've been able to hire and the job that they're doing and the team that they've become. So with the addition of these three additional officers, that is all the officers we're going to hire at this time. We've reached uh, the maximum uh, that we had for our goals uh, and, and uh, from the grants we had to help pay. So we have 10 officers now, along with the two additional dispatch officers working in our uh, security operations center. So uh, our community and our parents should be, feel very good about that. We'll have an officer uh, uh, assigned to each campus and the kids and the parents will get to know that officers and many of you have done that already. So again, we wanna welcome all those new personnel. They feel they fill key roles for us and we're glad to have them. Uh, also in the month of October and into the 1st of November, our Board of Trustees will be having several meetings dealing with the superintendent search process as I've talked to you a little bit before. Applications will uh, uh, end, the time period will end this Friday at 5 p.m. Uh, where we're very pleased with the number of applicants we have right now. And then the board starting October 23rd, we'll start meeting, selecting candidates for interview, and then over the next three or four weeks, interviewing those candidates and seeing if we can find a good fit uh, for Uvalde CISD. So these board members will uh, be having up to eight board meetings over the next few weeks. It's a lot of work. Many, many, many hours go into this process. And so uh, I respect and admire our trustees so much. They've done such a, a, a good job of hanging in there for the district this year always have the district in the, in the forefront of their minds. And this is a, a, a very time consuming, important commitment that they're putting in to, uh, to look at what we finally will hope will be uh, a great person to lead Uvalde CISD into, into the future. During this time, our, our board meetings, uh, all, everything dealing with the superintendent search process, our board meetings will be held at the central office. Now those board meetings will be all in executive session and that means that'll be in closed session with the, the uh, board interviewing candidates. There will not be any uh, open session items whatsoever other than calling the meeting to order. Now at each meeting, uh, we're, we have a requirement that public comments are allowed. So if somebody would like to make a comment to the board, they can come to these meetings and in our special meeting policy process, uh, states that uh, our public comments will be limited to one minute and they have to be on the agenda item. So the agenda item will be superintendent applicant interviews. So if anyone's interested, they can come talk for one minute about the super, superintendent interview process. And then the board will go into executive session. These sessions will last for several hours. Um, and so uh, there will, will not be a, a, a waiting area here at the central office during that time. The reception desk will be closed and so uh, the only place to wait would be outside. And I want to uh, stress that there'll be no action taken. So the boards will go into executive uh, session, consider applicants and information, and then come out and no action will be taken until the last evening sometime in November. 
So just a little bit about what's going on with the board and the superintendent search process. A couple other fun things that are coming uh, down in just uh, this month, October is a very busy month. We'll remind everybody that the groundbreaking for the, our new campus will be on the 28th of October at 10 a.m. Uh, at uh, the, the site of the new school, which is just east of Dalton Elementary School. So at 10 o'clock, uh, HEB will be hosting that. There'll be tents, there'll be snacks, there'll be uh, a few people make remarks, and then we'll have photo opportunities and the groundbreaking ceremony that we've waited uh, so long to have. Been delayed uh, on a couple times on some legal contractual issues, but we're finally there. We're gonna have groundbreaking on the 28th. That'll be a lot of fun. And then uh, uh, soon in November, you will be noticing uh, uh, ground being moved, the heavy equipment will come in and start moving the site around and we'll uh, finally start to see some movement on the construction of the new facility, which of course we're all extremely excited about. Now during that same week on the 25th, which is Wednesday, October 25th, we'll have our annual homecoming parade, which is a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed that very much last year. That was my first homecoming parade in Uvalde for sure. And what a fun event uh, uh, going through downtown and all the way out to the Honey Bowl to be followed by the pep rally and bonfire out there. So uh, a, a, a tradition that's uh, unique to Uvalde. Uh, we will look forward to having that parade. It's a lot of fun for our students and in our community. Watch that parade and participate in that parade. And it's always fun to see all the students that, that participate. So that'll be on the 25th on Wednesday evening and then on the 27th, we'll have our homecoming game, our homecoming court, our homecoming king and queen announced and just a lot of traditional good fun things uh, to accompany our Friday night lights at the homecoming game. So that's all uh, coming up in, in October, busy month. Like I said, the fall break is upon us. Uh, I wanna remind uh, our community, parents especially, that our fall break will, uh, will begin for students tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday, and then they'll come back to school on Tuesday the 17th. So this is a time that we really wanted for our students and our staff uh, to kind of regroup, rest up, uh, fall's a long stretch, and so this gives us a little break just to regroup, hopefully get some rest and relaxation, spend time with family and get some rest as we enter into uh, the next quarter of our grading period also coincides with the first quarter of school being over and grading. So parents, uh, stay on your kids. Uh, ask them if they have any late assignments, any work that needs to be made up, any special tests coming up, because uh, we need to focus on having a strong end to our academic quarter as we enter into the next quarter. And then the next quarter always goes very fast because once you get in November, uh, you're, you're, in, you're right on the edge of the holiday season. So. This uh, fall semester is in full swing with a lot going on. And parents, I want to uh, mention a couple things about enrollment and attendance in just one second, but I wanted, I forgot to point out some other events as if October wasn't already, already busy enough. This Friday night on the 13th, uh, we have a, a football game against Kennedy. Uh, even though we're on fall break, uh, football doesn't take a break. so. We'll have our game at the at the Honey Bowl at seven o'clock, and that's our pink out game to draw in, uh, awareness to uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So uh, wear your pink instead of your maroon this this Friday if you feel like it, and and help bring awareness uh, to breast cancer. Uh, also, our our Lobo volleyball is in full swing. They're playing at Floresville on Friday. We have a PTO meeting and volunteer training on the 17th at 6 p.m. Uh, in the UDLA, UDLA cafeteria. If you're, uh, thank you all for your interest and your participation in PTO. Y'all do such a great job. Thank you for, for taking that initiative and the volunteer training also is very important if you wanna volunteer on our campuses. On the 19th, uh, which is uh, start of next week, uh, our middle of next week, uh, Dalton will have a second grade music concert at 5 p.m. at the Dalton Cafeteria. And on that same evening, on the 19th of October, our uh, Uvalde High School Mariachi concert will be at 7 p.m. at the John Harrell Auditorium. 
and then we have football at Fredericksburg and on and on. For the 23rd through the 27th is Red Ribbon Week as we draw all kinds of attention to uh, drugs, awareness, uh, drug and alcohol free living choices and all of that. We highlight Red Ribbon Week and then of course our homecoming activities and our fall festival. On the 30th of October, we'll wind up the month at the, at the fall festival at 8.30 a.m. Uh, in the Kinchlow Gym. So that's a whole lot about October. So there are plenty of opportunities to get out and enjoy the activities that the schools have uh, and the events that we participate in. Uh, and I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about enrollment and attendance. Now, uh, you may not know, parents, that uh, our enrollment as of last Friday was 4,040 students. Now, what you may not know is the way that uh, the state funds school districts is not based on the number of students we have enrolled. It is based on the number of students of uh, the percentage that come to school each and every day. For example, our enrollment, meaning every child that has enrolled and registered in our school system was 4,040. But our average that came to school every day was only 3,319 for an average daily attendance of only 86%. That is a few percentage points lower than it really should be. Um, there is no reason for, no good reason that I can see as we look around the state that our attendance shouldn't be at least in the low 90s and be able to stay there. So the difference in, uh, for example, pre-COVID uh, average daily attendance until now is about 300 students. Our average daily attendance pre-COVID was right at 3,600 and right now we're looking at about 3,300. Now, what difference does that make? that makes about $2 million a year difference in the funding we get from the state. Just if we were at a 90 or 91% attendance rate instead of 86. So uh, parents, we're just, we continue to bring this up because attendance uh, is, is a community effort. It really takes awareness of families, parents, grandparents, extended families, friends, cousins, uh, everybody needs to make the effort to get our uh, kids to school every day. The school has responsibilities. We need to be reaching out to parents. We need to have our attendance teams out in the districts to see if there's issues that we can help with in any way with our parents, grandparents, guardians to, to ensure these kids are coming to school because if they don't come to school, they get behind. And if they get behind, it's very hard to catch up. And if they don't catch up, it leads to problems down the line. So uh, if we can do anything for you uh, in your particular situation, if you're having some, if, some issues with parents working multiple shifts possibly uh, and, and, and need some assistance in any way with uh, the kids getting to school, if you will reach out uh, to our offices here at Central Office or your campuses, well, I can assure you that we, we, we will be in contact with you and see if there's anything we can do to help. But it really is an issue for us, a difficult issue, I know. Uh, uh, it's extremely important that we continue to work on that uh, and get, get more, more of our students on a daily basis. We had some presentations last evening as well. We had a presentations from our curriculum and instruction department regarding our district and campus improvement plans. It's a requirement that each campus and the district review their academic achievement from the prior year, look at goals uh, in, in, in several different areas and make plans on how we will address those goals. So I wanna thank everybody from administrators to parents to teachers who sat on these committees it's a lot of work every year putting these plans together. It's a requirement. And so the boards were made, uh, presentations were made to the board about the campus and district performance uh, 
uh, objectives and plans and the board did approve those. Also, our bilingual program uh, evaluation was presented to the board as well. Uh, so, uh, with that, we, we wrapped it up with a short executive session on personnel and then we adjourned the meeting. And again, uh, uh, I want, if you have any questions or concerns about the meeting last night or anything that we can do about that, uh, if you want inf more information on anything that was there, if you will contact us, we'll make sure you get that. Now, again, we have, uh, have fall break coming up this week, and then we ride into a lot of our end of uh, October activities with homecoming and groundbreaking and end of first quarter, all those things. So there's a lot going on and a lot of good things going on and our staff, uh, the teachers, our instructional staff, our principals on campus, parents are really working hard and we're fortunate to have the quality of the people that we do have in our district. The teachers uh, have been through a lot, as you know, uh, over these last months, but they're, they've stuck with us. We're not seeing the shortages in our teaching numbers as some many schools across the state, even with the issues that we've had. So every time you see a teacher, I would hope that you thank them uh, for what they're doing, uh, everything they're doing to educate the students in our buildings every day. So thank you for, for tuning in and watching. We appreciate everybody that uh, watches our videos and we hope it's an effective way to communicate. And uh, we'll be back next week with highlight uh, some more programs in our district and, uh, and, and update you on all the things that are going on uh, around us. So again, thanks for everything. Let us know if we can help in any way. And until we see you next week, thank you.